Of course, of course, at a personal level, people appreciated the hugely courageous way that she battled illness <coughs> at the time. Her physical courage was inspiring to, to many people, but her political courage was immense. Uh, sometimes in politics, the hardest thing to do uh, is to break free of the uh, conventions of the norms of the past. Uh, Mo did this, this as Secretary of State. Uh, I don't give any criticism to any other Secretary of State, but I do say that Mo Mullen was a breath of fresh air in the way that she dealt uh, with the issue of the Irish question. And Mo knew that to truly make peace, you had to earn the support and trust of all sides. She was always impartial in her job. She had one overriding concern, and that was peace. Sometimes I did not agree with her on the route of the shared objective, and that was obvious. I especially recall one marching season where she, we eventually agreed to disagree, but I never doubted her bona fides. She was not there to take sides. She wanted to reach out to both communities and to be an honest broker of peace. And this was a new departure and something that she was criticised for being perceived as too close to Republicans. But Mo knew it was important to bring this community in from the cold. They hadn't been talking to anybody for 40 years. And this initially caused some unionists to be suspicious of her motives. But her engaging personality, her straightforward, honest and direct approach meant that they too came to see her as a woman that they could do business with. And they did. In reflecting on all of the progress that has been made in bringing peace to Northern Ireland, I often wonder uh, where we would be without the courage and tenacity <coughs> of Mo Mullen. Uh, and the tenacity particularly, I just want to give you one event uh, that she uh, took a huge political risk in January of 1998. <coughs> it was prior to the Good Friday Agreement. I have no doubt that this historic accord would never have come to fruition if Mo Mullen had not taken the courageous step <coughs> she did at the time. Mo Mullen, in January 1998, hovered up <coughs> Northern Ireland, hovered on the abyss <coughs> of a full scale. <coughs> The gym is all I use. <laughs> Northern Ireland floated on the abyss of a full state conflict, and it was a fork in the road for the whole peace process. It was a time of immense tension, with the loyalist prisoners indicating that they were going to withdraw their support for the peace process and return to war. If this had happened, it is, it is unlikely the combined line of ceasefires would have held, and the situation was that serious. Mo tackled this crisis head on against all the advice. <coughs> Looking back from the standpoint of over a decade on, I think it's, it is a fair perspective to say that Mo put the cause of peace above her own career at this critical juncture. Uh, many officials cautioned her against going into the Mays prison to meet convicted loyalist paramilitaries, and I've no doubt that if she had not persuaded them to stay with the talks, most political opponents would have sought to make her position untenable. It was an immense political risk. It required huge personal and political courage, but these were qualities that Mo had in abundance. As she walked into the prison, as she met people who were by and large the leaders of the loyalist groups in Northern Ireland, most of them were in prison for long terms and uh, for a conviction of, of murder charges. Um, some of them very serious uh, charges, uh, and Mo knew that, but she negotiated and debated with them uh, behind bars uh, to get them to stick with the process uh, so that we could continue with the negotiations. Uh, it is a long story, um, which we could go on all night with, but uh, the end result was that against every odd in her own political head, um, as she won out, convinced them, uh, they said they'd stick with the negotiations, would allow the rest of us to continue on. Without Mo doing that, Tony Blair, I and nobody else would have been worth a candle. Uh, the thing would have broken down and the Good Friday Agreement never would have happened. And I think we all knew that something from outside of the box was needed to keep the process on track. Uh, and Mo um, provided that. The loyalist prisoners respected Mo's courage, but they also recognised that she had gone the extra mile for peace. And that to her credit, they decided to match this by sticking with the process. It was a turning point for peace in Ireland. It was instrumental in breaking the logjam. And her press conference in the immediate <coughs> aftermath of her prison visit was classic no-nonsense. 
it was in her own words, if you want progress, you ain't going to get it if you don't have talks. That was her famous quote. And those words of Mo go to the heart of the peace process. Inclusion has triumphed over exclusion. Hope has flourished over fear. And democratic dialogue has replaced political violence. So much has been achieved. Twelve years on, when Mo first came to Northern Ireland as Secretary of State, its landscape is scarred by heavily militarised barracks and watchtowers. Many border roads remain closed, and there was a very huge troop presence in the north. Today, the physical landscape is transformed. The hardware conflict is gone. The remaining troops are confined to barracks. But we've come a long way, and we can all take pride in that. The inclusive power sharing institutions in Northern Ireland the Assembly, the Executive, are now working to address the day-to-day -day concerns of the people. <coughs> the policing of the criminal justice system in Northern Ireland has been transformed. And crucially, in many years of arduous negotiations, the IRA has formally ended this campaign of pain and violence, and the independent <coughs> body of the Commission of Arms have verified that the totality of the arms have been decommissioned. All of that is part of Mo's great political legacy, President. In May 2008, uh, it was a highlight of my career to tell the US Congress that Ireland is at peace. And with that peace comes the opportunity for the island of Ireland to deliver on its full potential. For too long, part of all of Ireland was held back by conflict and division. And in our history, that division goes back hundreds and hundreds of years. Today, we have a new ethos. But there can be no cause for complacency, and we need to build on the good foundations that are there. Peace must be protected and sectarian but still it often rears its ugly head in Northern Ireland. All too often has to be stamped out. Momolan abhorred bigotry and this went to the core of her politics. She was a committed socialist who wanted to see people prosper and better their lives regardless of background, politics or creed. The Good Friday Agreement which Mo was central to has delivered us to the point where in David Trimble's memorable phrase Northern Ireland is no longer a coal house for Catholics. But all of us now have a lot of responsibility to ensure that the isolation, the alienation felt by nationalists will never ever be projected uh, onto unionists. I hope too that the loyalist communities who've suffered much exclusion can now be carried forward by the tide of opportunity uh, that is at hand. In the end, the peace process must leave no one behind. Uh, these sentiments, President, are much in accordance with what was Mo's philosophy in politics. In her own words, she summed up her career as showing people that life could be about. And I quote again one of her famous quotes, more people than despair and showing that people working together can overcome many obstacles, often within themselves, and by doing so can make the world a better place. Mo did that. She certainly lived up to those words. She played a key role in advancing the peace process in Northern Ireland, which has saved countless lives and history and will be judged accordingly. As I said, three and a half thousand people died in the troubles. Tens of thousands of people were injured. Um, somewhere around 15,000 people had uh, injuries uh, that will remain with them, unfortunately, to, to their death. Um, but now, um, in, in this calendar year, I think it may be true and maybe three people <coughs> died uh, through anything associated with political violence in Northern Ireland. And that was from uh, a group of people uh, who just would never uh, give up. And a uh, small, small minority of people um, have to be watched, have to be controlled, uh, but they're not from any of the groupings uh, that we dealt with over the last 15 years. In conclusion, President, uh, Mo Mola was a politician and a person uh, whom people everywhere held in great affection and esteem. As Secretary of State for Northern Ireland, she was prepared to take risks for the peace process, risks to secure agreement, and risks to implement it. If politics is about securing change for the common good, uh, the peace we enjoy today uh, in the island of Ireland are a measure of how most sense of public service has transformed the lives of people across these islands. And for you in this uh, great school of learning and in this uh, great society of Northern Union, I think you can uh, take uh, your own, your own bow uh, that a famous person called Mo Mullen has started her days here. I know you've had many, many other important people through this, but in terms of Ireland and the people that I represent on the island of Ireland, 
there can be nobody that has gone through this university more important than normal.